So here we go, trading stocks on Darwin X, and in the next, hopefully, 20 to 25 minute, minutes, I'd love to explain to you the, the launch sequence we are going to, to follow when offering stocks to, to Darwin X customers and why we're following that sequence. And then later, more generally, explain the differences between a direct market access uh, contract of difference reference to stocks, which is what we you get when you trade with uh, Darwin X, and how that differs from offerings that you may experience elsewhere, uh, because you know, as you say, the detail, the devil is in the details, and you have to make sure that the offering ticks all the boxes, or at least I very much would do so. So on that basis, first thing, why are we adding stocks, and uh, why are we doing this in the sequence that we're doing it? And before I explain that, I would like to share our thinking in terms of adding stocks to the Darwin universe. So we're doing this because we, first of all, traders are lifeblood. So we want to attract traders who trade equities to the to the offering. Um, we also think that some of those traders will be longer term um, active investors who will be introduced to the Darwin asset class and might consider diversifying some of their equity exposure onto uh, Darwin's in say you know equity uh, sorry uh, FX uh, because that's it's, it's another asset class and then longer term a Darwin is really you know a fancy way of calling what others would think of as a, as a fund so we'd very much like to see the which interest we get from uh, buy and hold long only managers to gauge whether we want to expand to the, the offering to, to cater to the needs of, of less aggressive um, traders. So on that basis, the, the sequence we, we, are, we have already started is to offer the 30 stock components of the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the MT5 trading platform, which we very much chose for its capability to, to manage under one roof both the uh, um, FX indices, commodities, stocks, and going forward also futures. Uh, once we are 100% familiar and comfortable with the operational aspects of both our automated platform and also the day-to-day -day stuff on offering stocks to customers, we will expand the offering to reach the most liquid references for sure the 200 to 300 most liquid references in US markets. And depending on the, the liquidity we see and the risk for issues with say market abuse and so on, which we want to wait, stay well clear of, we might go even deeper than that. Technically, it's not a complexity. It's, it's more of a, a choice of the business model. Um, in parallel, we will gradually do the same for European references on the MT5 platform. And you see those are the three certain steps of what we I'm publicly committing to doing. And thereafter, there's a number of questions that I'd, I'd love to gather your take on, which are, you know, what trading platforms would you guys want? Would you like us to expand the equities offering to the MT4 platform? Are there any other platforms that you would be keen on using? Uh, we are, for instance, gauging the interest to add uh, to adding TradingView to our offering, especially now that we've got stocks. Any other platforms? Um, uh, and so far, we've talked about being a box standard broker uh, that offers stocks. Then the next two bits are we are not a box standard broker. We are the Darwin Exchange. We offer people the possibility of listing their strategy as a new financial asset and collecting success fees either on our proprietary Darwinia allocation, which uh, which is a notional allocation now of 24 million at 10% at value at risk. Uh, our plan is to start testing the model with adjustments uh, to start investing ourselves via the Darwinian allocation. We already know that some elements are going to be, will need some adjustments. So the first one is um, the stocks do not trade 24-5, they, they close daily and they, there can be gaps in the price of the stock. So how will our risk manager account for that? We've already done the developments, but we want to be 100% sure that the adjustments to the algos work as we would like them to before we really go over to offering Darwin's to third parties based on, on, on equities. And then there's a longer st standing question as well, which is um, 
do we just want to stick to, to CFDs or will we actually consider offering cash equities in addition to uh, contracts or differences? And that will very much depend on the interest we see from you and also just how you know how fast we meet these strategic objectives we, we've set for ourselves when offering stocks. So that, that is the sequence and, and also the logic behind the sequence so that you understand if we do X, it's because you know that's what we learned when, when offering this to you guys. But the answer is ultimately depends on, on you guys. Yeah, we are by traders for traders and whatever you like us to do, we will end up doing because it's in everyone's interest. Okay. Um, so I don't really plan to go into a lot of detail about the specific offering, but if you want to learn about the specific conditions of what we do, you need to, you know, you need to go no further than the execution conditions section, where we list the the spreads on all the different assets. And you go to the assets and spreads section, and in there, you just go visit the stocks for the USA. You can see the the references, the margin, which is a shorthand for five to one leverage, uh, minimum contract size, the, the the symbols, and so on and so forth. So you can find anything about the practicalities of investing here, uh, uh, there. For those of you who are not familiar with the concept, the way Darwin X works is you have a single wallet where you wire your funds, and that wallet can then fund a any number of MT4 accounts, any number of MT5 accounts, and also the one investor account where you can invest in in Darwin's and that doesn't change so that's that's the way we will continue to, to operate um, practically speaking right now you will not be able to trade single stocks and any of the Darwin Neville assets at the same time because um, you know we the Darwin Dar Darwin Neville accounts could be listed as a Darwin and currently stocks are not supported for that for the reasons I just discussed. So you would need a dedicated MT5 account to trade equity stocks. Are there any specific questions when it comes to the, the, the more mundane aspects of our offering that you want me to tackle now? I'll give you a bit of time. Apologies, I've just realized that I wasn't show you, showing you the, the, the screen. so. You know, this is where you find it. I'll repeat the sequence again. Uh, go to you Google Darwin X execution condition. That takes you right there. And once you're here, you go for assets and spreads. And in this case, stocks, because we what we currently offer is the US stocks. We will shortly be launching European ones. So Zhang is asking me why is the commission so high? Well, it isn't. It isn't meant to be high. I, I don't really think. I mean, it, this is more competitive than most of the brokers you'll find, to be honest. Well, Zhang, I mean, I think that there's an issue here with the contract size, right? We have to account for that because we're talking 10, 10 contracts. So it's this is zero zero four because it's cheaper than interactive brokers. So John is asking who is the liquidity provider for CFDs. So we'll we'll discuss that in a bit. But the liquidity provider is uh, the the answer is there's no liquidity provider. It is the market, and that is why it's a direct market access CFD. And that's exactly the reason for this webinar because I wanted to explain that. We need to start with a bit of terminology. So you know, an equity or a stock is um, a share in the profits of a an underlying company. So traditionally, investors bought the the, the cash stock, which is actually a, a title uh, of ownership uh, of a tiny piece of a corporation. Now, when it comes to trading, as we'll see, if all you're going to do is buy and sell the stuff pretty quick, it might make sense to instead of owning the asset outright, placing a bet based on the price of the underlying asset, which is what a CFD is. And that is what we offer right now. For a number of reasons, CFDs cannot be, can be opaque and intransparent. So for instance, Joan was asking me who was the liquidity provider, because that means you know there'll be different prices for different stocks with different brokers when you buy a CFD. And that is the reason why we offer direct market access CFDs, which basically mean the price you get from our CFDs is the same price that you will get in the cash markets. That's what we think is, is the better way of handling this, okay? So here we go. Uh, the rest of this webinar is explaining 
all the substance entailed in these definitions because as ever the devil is in the details so first question why are we offering cfds instead of cash stocks well there's four points the first one is uh, the taxman has an interest in curbing spe speculation or making revenues from it. So, for instance, if you're uh, UK-based, you might be familiar with the concept of stamp duty, which is a percentage of the value of the of the purchase you've done that you have to pay every time you buy and share as um, a a stock. Uh, now, if you're going to trade, that very very quickly skyrockets into insaneness. So, you cannot really trade stocks you can only trade cfds and in the rest of the world there's periodic comebacks of the top in tax which would be basically global versions of, of the stamp duty and this is why a cfd because it's a it's a bet stays a lot safer from those taxation uh, taxation attempts because guess what the biggest gambling operator in many countries is the taxman so before they bend the rules to go against their own revenues they'll think about it twice um Second is, as I mentioned, there's a lot of overhead when you buy a, a title um, or a, an ownership title, it, such as clearing, so making sure that whoever sells the stock gets the cash and whoever pays the cash gets the stock uh, to, to make sure the transaction goes, goes about flawlessly. Also, there's custody requirements to, for, by a custodian to make sure that your title is there when you need it. And, and all these things are really irrelevant when all you're doing is placing a gamble on whether Vodafone goes up or down in the next two days. So, you know, might as well save ourselves that bit and structure the whole thing as a bet. Then thirdly, it gives you a much easier way to short the, the stocks, which you don't get when you're you know, when you own the outright interest. And last, there's the possibility of being more flexible in terms of getting leverage or um, buying more granular elements than the full stock and so on. And that is why we go for for the for the CFDs in the in the short term. Okay. Now, what are the con the, the the risks and the cons of uh, the CFD? Well, again, there's no free lunch. The the first point is because you don't own the position, you're funding the position, you're paying swaps on it. So you can see the the swaps that we charge are in the thing. I'm, I'm going to show, uh, apologies, guys, because I keep switching screens and you guys are not following. So I'm just going to make sure that I share all my screen, and hopefully that ha doesn't happen again. So I've been talking about the four points before about the the benefits of of uh, the CFDs in the previous slide. Unfortunately, you haven't seen that. Uh, on, the, on the cons, we were talking about the swaps on funding, which you can see transparently as with everything Darwin X on the execution conditions page. There's the counterparty risk. So who's going to pay up if, the, if you win the bet? That is very, very important, as you would expect. And last but not least, who, in the case of a conflict, who says what the actual price of the underlying was? Um, uh, in the cash stock, it's very clear. It's what the order book said. But when it comes to CFDs, it's not always the case. And that is one of the reasons we offer DMA CFDs. So let's get on to that. Uh, that is the, the reason we are offering direct market access CFDs is to offer you the most transparency that the price you see is the price you get. And the price you get is the best price that could be gotten at any point in time. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, to run a brief summary on, on the, the core benefits of the direct market access that you get with Tyronex CFDs is coming back to Joan's question, who's on the other side of the trade? Well, it's it's the market. It's the we are going. If you in the case of, of Apple, whoever offered was on the other side of the order book whenever you purchase that Apple stock, that is your liquidity provider. Okay. So that is what a direct market access CFD is. You know, it's, you're, it, it's structured as a bet, but it is going straight into the order book. It's not one liquidity provider. It's the aggregation of, you know, the, all the liquidity providers in the order book at any point in time. In many other cases, uh, this is not the case. Typically, what happens is when you're trading for small amounts, you may very well be trading against the B book of the market maker. And if you trade larger size, then you know possibly they will hedge it out to the market. But you, you know you would not necessarily see the market price in the spread that is streamed to you by the CFD provider because they do a lot of uh, derived pricing. Which brings us to the next question. So, which price do you see when you trade uh, single stock with the uh, Darwin X? Well, the price the price you see is the pr the cash. 
price on the BATS exchange, which is a member of the CBOE group. And we'll come back to that in a second. So you see the price of the real market. Whereas in many other places, what you see is different spreads in different brokers because it's a dealer who's making the price. The price you get is the best price according to MIFID uh, that Morgan Stanley, which is a systematic internalizer servicing our prime brokers, will, will certify down to the last milli, millisecond. Again, if you're trading with market makers, the price you get is set by the dealer and this can come to conflict of interest because sometimes you'll say hey i got a price which the real market never really touched and you get into this endless loop of discussion which you typically lose because when you trade uh, with a market maker the market maker has a conflict of interest and uh, which is twofold um, one is if too many customers win at the same time then the shareholders make less money and secondly they happen to be a referee and a party to the bet which is well, less healthy than if you're trading with a broker who's got not, no stake in the in the outcome. And last but not least, there's the counterparty risk, which in, in the case of Darwin X is, you know, you're facing our balance sheet. Should we go bust? Uh, the, this could catch you. That's why we don't take market risk to be far more solid than others who do take it. Uh, obviously, some of your money is placed with, with a, our house bank. So if our house bank were to default, then you would, you know, if you're covered by the financial services compensation scheme, then you're fine. But otherwise, that that is a risk you've got. And last is, of course, the, sound, the, the soundness of our counterparties, which in the case of single stock CFDs are EDNF Man as our primary. I encourage you to check out EDNF Man. So they've got several things going for them, which are pretty reassuring. The first one is the fact that they were established in 1783. So you know. They know how to manage risk, otherwise they wouldn't be around. And also, they've got a pretty good incentive to manage risk because it's an employee-owned commodities merchant, which means that if they're, you know, if the employees fuck it up, excuse my English, they lose their company, and that is the best way to align incentives in our humble view. Furthermore, if you check out the their numbers, you'll realize that th what they say here is true. They are our large, growing, and highly profitable commodities broker, which means the balance sheet is as solid as it gets. Okay? Uh, now, if you're if you're not a Darwin X customer and you're not convinced by what I'm telling you here, if you're going to trade with a market maker, please, please, please pick the biggest one you know and make sure it's properly regulated because otherwise you could be in for an ugly surprise. So coming back to the point of the price you, you see, um, let's go for that. When we talk about the US markets, again, Different stocks are, diff are listed in different markets, but uh, the price you get from us is the price that from BZX top. We've got these are the so the price you see is CBOE. As you can see, they've got 20%. I mean today, but we can look at the month to date. So the the market share is as big as the biggest. They're slightly second, but you know, they're, they're the second in US markets, uh, only second to the New York Stock Exchange. So it is a very, very re as representative as, as we could get a price. And it has the, in terms of being it for us to be able to subsidize it, it was the best offering. That's why we picked it. Okay. When it comes to Europe, again, uh, it's the same provider. Uh, in, the, in the case of the European stocks, the benefit is that they've got global coverage. So we can see the side here. You'll see that outside of the primary markets, in each case, they are the best provider. So you know, there's more volume traded in, say, Spanish stocks in Bolsa de Madrid than is traded in CBOE Europe. But the benefit of CBOE Europe is that under one roof, you get the biggest share of volume in all the main markets in, in Europe. That's, again, why we picked it. So that is the price you see from us. OK? Now. The price you see is different from the price you get because uh, the price you see is the price from the BATS market that I just discussed. The price you get is the best price available to Morgan Stanley at the point where you request to get filled. Now, unfortunately, this is a bit of a, of a messy situation because there are different factors by which you can judge how well you got filled. One of them is price, but it's not the only. It could be that, you know, it could be cheaper to get filled in another venue or it could be faster in another venue so there's less room for for slippage so there there's 
different complementary but also slightly conflicting objectives that Morgan Stanley has to fill. So uh, we'll come back to that issue, but you know, it's 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 hard to define best execution. In the case of a retail trader, it's possibly price, but when you're talking about being a Darwin manager, possibly, you know, execution certainty being filled for the full amount is is as important, if not more, than price. So it's it's one of those moving targets that you don't really know how to hit because it's impossible. But uh, the method regulation, on which you can read more in this link, explains the factors and how they work in terms of the total client cost. Also, the the transparency, and this is very important. So uh, Morgan Stanley have an obligation to explain to you exactly why the price you got for the Apple stock at the exact millisecond where you traded is the best price that they could get at that point in time. And then if you had expressly said, which we don't offer, but if you if you chose to tap the markets directly, then you can tell Morgan Stanley, hey, I want to execute only on NASDAQ and I want that price. And then you know the, 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 the offerer would have to respect your preference. And last but not least, and this is a real step forward, uh, they have barred kickbacks, which basically means that if uh, CBOE Europe, which is not the case, offered us a kickback which was higher than, say, Turquoise, but Turquoise had the better price, then it would be illegal for us to route to CBOE, uh, CBOE Europe because the kickbacks, are, you know, they shouldn't be factored in any equation. And as a matter of fact, they're now forbidden. Okay, so these are the guarantees you enjoy when trading with us in the direct market access offering, which you don't necessarily have when you trade with uh, B-Book um, equity offerings. So one thing that I want to forewarn you is that the liquidity in stocks, even if we're talking about the most liquid ones, is not as high as it typically is on, on the FX pairs or even commodities. So you should start getting used to the reality of, of, of slippage when you trade certain size. Uh, I'm not going to teach what slippage means, but I really encourage you to, to read up on it uh, and expect that if you trade large size, then you see the top of book price on the order book because that's what we can stream to you at, at, uh, at no cost. But if you trade larger than the volume that is available on the on the top of book you will get slipped and it's not because we're a bucket shop it's because the market works like that okay and last but not least there's a point i mean that, that i wanted to to discuss for us coming from the forex world which is rotten to the bone we we hoped to to reach safer territories when when uh, offering equities and we've learned that it's there's no free lunch so uh, in in uh, equities, you do have venues with regulated order books, and there's no issue for running stops or, or stuff like that, which you, which you see sometimes in Forex, unfortunately. But at the same time, what you've got is liquidity fragmentation because uh, it is possible to have at the same time, you know, the, the Apple stock lists not just in one market, but in several at the same time. And that open, opens up the opportunity for arbitrage. And what happens is there's, a lot of investment going into all these fiber optic lines to, that are designed to connect the markets between themselves uh, for the benefit of high frequency traders who scalp tiny differences in the, in the prices of Apple between the two markets where it might be quoting. And that ultimately comes at the expense of your pocket because no matter how, how much best execution you introduce into the equation, you will never know what the spread would have been for your Apple trade if the regulator had forced all the volumes trading on Apple onto a single market, which would have compressed the bid ask uh, accordingly. Uh, so what you've got now is the, you know, there are multiple venues offering trading of Apple and they will compete on say speed of execution and the APIs and the co-location and, and the kind of a technology arms race. But uh, that comes at the expense of fragmentation and some people like these high frequency traders, some of them are making a, a quite a bit of money at the expense of pretty much everyone, um, which to me is an, an interesting challenge in how to define a market. And with that, which is far more abstract than uh, the rest of the webinar, I'd just like to open up to the Q&A session, uh, letting you know, guys, that we are programming uh, one of these Ask Me Anything questions where you can ask me anything you want and I'll, I'll hopefully be able to, to answer there and then uh, in the upcoming weeks. So stay tuned for our webinar section. And if there's anything else that bugs you on 
other than equity stocks, uh, please you know please suggest and we'll try and run our webinar. So without so having said that, I open up for Q and A's. And the answer by so the question by Jigesh is the the swap is 1.15 percent. It's not per day. That's that's per year, and that is prorated to on a per day basis. So the the 1.15 is the the actual annual interest rate. You guess we're not going to charge you 1.15 percent of the of the position overnight. So the the 1.15 is prorated to the number of days. And uh, Azan, there's no you you don't have to be sorry about anything. I am I mean I, I am pretty convinced that we've set the prices for for the equities to be competitive. Uh, so I'm not claiming that we are always cheaper than everybody else out there, but we're certainly not 10 times more expensive than interactive brokers. There's no way. So I need to, I, I will make the numbers and if you get back to me, I will try and let you know about that. So Joanne is asking, so if I understood right, Saxo Bank and EDNF Man supply the money to cover up to one to five leverage. That is correct. So Saxo Bank and EDNF Man, they are providing us and you with credit to borrow, to buy the stocks up to a rate of five to one. That is exactly right. That is their role. They're providing credit. They're kind of our bank, if you want to look at it that way. Bear in mind that stocks are quite a lot more volatile than, than FX. So one to, the five to one leverage in stocks, it's a lot of leverage. Okay, so there's a question by uh, Sadiq, which is why is only MT5 supported for now? So uh, there's a number of reasons. So th the first one, is that uh, MT4 is limited in the maximum number of symbols that we can offer. So it is not inconceivable unco that we will offer more references than I think the 1,032 symbols that are allowed in MT4. That is one of the reasons. The The other reason is that it is, uh, we, we basically have two bridge providers right now and only one of them is connected to the pricing source. So once the integration for by the other is done, and if there is enough interest on the NT4 side uh, of, of stocks, we, we could consider offering that. Okay, so Zan, uh, Zan is asking a very fair question, which is, are we just limited to the BATS exchange? Why not the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ Exchange too? Just curious, okay? So the price you see is the BATS price, and that is because we are paying BATS to stream prices to you. So that is already quite some money. If we wanted to stream the best price of BATS and New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ at the same time, we would have to treble the price bill and, and we would have to basically raise the commissions. Uh, that, that's where you know ultimately you would have to be paying for it. Now, when it comes to trading, the price you get, so one thing is the price you see, which is the BATS exchange price, but the price you get is the best of BATS, New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and any of the other venues that we've seen here. So you get the best price of all these five. That's the price you get, but you only see the price for the top of book price for BZ Tech, uh, BZX actually, this one, the top of book. So the, the shorthand is the reason we restricted the number of price seeds you see is because it would cost a ton of money to subsidize that for all customers without any obvious benefit because ultimately they're almost the same because the high frequency traders are making the, I, are keeping it aligned. So Sadiq is asking, as far as I know, Darwin managers can only operate on MT4. Do you plan to change this in the near future? And the answer is, we plan to change this in the very, very, very near future. So there's some good news coming on that front. Ah, okay. So San, you're concerned that the, the, the chart is different. So we, we've really checked it. Uh, other than, say, the first minute on market opening, the prices are virtually identical. And if you see here, you can see that the volume you've got on BATS is, you know, it's substantial compared to what you get everywhere else. So it's kind of, it is the second biggest venue out there. Okay, so thank you so much. Um, there's one question which I had for you guys, and that is, if there's one thing that we could offer you guys as a development in Darwin X, what would you, you know, if I had a magic wand to deliver that right now, what is it you would want from us? Okay, C Trader, interesting. So Zan, for your inter for your for reference, we we did integrate with C Trader 
two years ago, we did a pretty large int integration to, to make it possible to trade from CTrader. And we had, I mean, you're, gonna believe, you're not gonna believe this, but we had zero interest out there. So that was kind of pretty much money sunk in the sand, unfortunately. Okay, a very good, uh, a very good EA builder. Okay, that's interesting, jo uh, Joanne. So we, um, would you like to get the the backtesting platform from us, or would you like us to offer an API that you can connect any other kind of backtestable platform? That that is my question. Because for us to build an EA builder, I don't think I mean that that would be quite outside of our current priorities but certainly offering an api so you can trade anything uh, that is something we could really look look at so fx pro quant okay i didn't i wasn't familiar with what they do there and there's two sound regarding pip size calculation so john th there are commercial offerings for ea builders and mt5 one of the major steps forwards from MT5 over MT4 is that the the MQL5 language is far better and has less a lot less errors there. Ah, oh, so Web Trader for MT5. Okay, that's a that's a good point. I could I haven't thought of that. So some of guys, some of you guys are asking me if I can recommend a good one. Uh, I cannot because I'm not a, an algorithmic trader myself. But you might want to reach out to user Integra Core Two um on the darwin x community and also if you can see my screen so for algor for the algorithmic guys out there there's a this post got lots of traction with developers and it's basically giving you an option to integrate met uh, meta quotes with your python algos and that makes it available to use anything else so Zan is asking, are we planning to integrate with TradingView? And the answer is, uh, that would be very nice. We are looking into it in detail. It doesn't depend 100% on us because we need our some of our technology providers to agree to for that to happen. But yes, we have TradingView is the, the one platform we get the most requests for. And if we were to add you know, a third platform, it would be TradingView. Okay, so Joan, I think I uh, reach out to me. Sorry, at my email address, and I can privately recommend you a couple of guys. I think I know where you're going now. Okay, thanks a lot for the the good questions. I hope this was useful to you guys. And uh, as I said, it, it has been recorded, so if you have any any stuff that you missed out in the beginning, you can always come back to listen to it. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and I I really look forward to seeing you in upcoming webinars. Take care, guys.